Welcome to episode 85. I've glanced over there to check which one it is of the <laughs> Let's Talk Game podcast. Jesus Christ, boys, it's been a while. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, a long time. We set out that outset. Yeah, we set out is it in January to do this bi weekly, kind of like give ourselves some flexibility. We're all super busy. And then we all got even busier than busy. And now it's the 14th of April. It's yes, April. Yes, it's April. April. What happened? Um, Dan, you obviously did a quick little solo podcast last week, but um, we've managed to get us all together for a bit. So mm-hmm. we'd usually start off with what we've been playing, but I think we should start with how we're all actually doing, because it's been a bit of a minute. Now, I was trying to jump while you were getting set up, Dan, so I'm more inclined to see how you're getting on. So um, what's the, what's been going on? What's the crack? Uh, it's hard when the question's asked. Now, I'm I'm doing really well. We're doing really well Monique and I obviously house is coming along marriages have happened my brother got married as well in that time since we last spoke uh so that was a good time I actually had my bucks the, only the other week because it was kind of a belated thing um but it's just it's just filling out the house I think safely the house is now a home because we've just been able to start filling it out with our stuff um so that that's the thing and work's just getting busy and busy and you know talking about the world just shortages everywhere everywhere you go um which is just making life super busy but in australia we've got a few public holidays happening coming up so that's gonna be very very uh beneficial to my psyche <laughs> we've got lots of uh lots of those too this weekend as the starting block for it Easter and then there's some more happening later on into the uh, into the month. Chunt, what's going on in like planning marriage land and moving over to Mexico for two weeks and smuggling oh, your fiance back in a suitcase? Oh fuck! I wish I could. I put her in my pocket. Like, oh man, I just I look. Dad even made a joke with me. He's like, you know, you should just go and leave over there for six months or something. I was like, yeah, that'd be great, Dad. How am I going to do that? <laughs> you know, I can't work remotely over there because it's. Yeah, and then that'd be amazing if I could. But anyway, yeah, just wedding planning. I mean, to be fair, she's doing it all. Like, because I'm not there, right? So she's doing it all. She's planning everything and um, with her mum and stuff. And I'm just like, I just, I'm just going to turn up, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> you know, I just need to make sure I get there in this stupid world that we're in. Um, besides that, you know, utilizing all forms of technology and um, creativity that we have to um, stay connected in more ways than one. And <laughs> playing a lot of games and watching movies together. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> mm. Yes. What about you, Dad? What about you, Dad? How are you? Um, yeah, I'm being busy. Busy being Dad. Busy being working. Um, went over to see my family a few weeks ago. Took the kids. He just, uh, my eldest decided to smash his face off the floor in the airport. Oh. That was a joy. Oh, Blood everywhere. Man. He looked like he'd like grown a second mouth by the next morning it's just it's just what you want after a, a whole day of traveling you're at that last stretch just get the plane and we're done and that was eventful and fun yeah work's uh getting busier lots of work trips coming up took my wife to amsterdam for her birthday so yeah i've been living up to that traveling moniker and i'm away on monday as well i'm in london with work for a few days so hence that type of busyness and life shenanigans as to why it's been very difficult to get us all together for a while um i think as well part of that my relationship personally with games seems to have changed lately i don't know if that's just a byproduct of my mental state or a byproduct of the fact that i just don't have time for them um and kind of come into terms with that as being weird you know it's like having that zero urge to play a video game dan i think you were in a similar state sort of towards the end of last year just going i don't actually want to play anything like so i'm not going to force myself to sometimes you have kind of got to force yourself just to go into something um and yeah we'll i mean i have played some games so without further ado what have we been playing uh dan it's unfair to let you go because you had the stage to yourself last week and told us all about what you'd been playing so chun (laughs) i uh 
I see you've been um you're very you're very very close to my uh, gamer score now. You've been you've been honing down on me for the best part of six months, and you're getting very close. So what have you been uh, what have you been playing? A lot. I don't know if I can't remember the the last batch of games that, that we spoke of that I was playing, but like a, a way out. You know that game where it's like the two player co op thing. Like we played yeah. through that. Um, that was really good. And the great thing about yeah. a way out and the other. To, it takes two um is like she doesn't have game pass ultimate but i do and she can still download the game and i can invite it to my game because i own a copy of it which is awesome you know and i didn't i t- it totally skipped my mind that that was a feature of that game and it makes sense being a it's solely a reliable it relies on the co-op aspect of the game but, but both of those games are great i want more of that but those kinds of experiences were very really enjoyable i'd like to do more of that um elder scrolls online been playing a bit more of that with her elden ring fucking hell god damn it elden ring talk about that for a bit um or just a, uh, i won't rant on about it but holy shit like i've always been you guys have known me for ages now and i've always been like fucking souls games yeah, like i don't want to play that shit <laughs> you know like i just don't understand it why would you want to play a game that fucks you up so much but i get it now at least with elden ring like i know a lot of people said it was accessible and it's um it's not it's it's not, but <laughs> I got to a point with it where I kind of I started to get it, you know, started to understand what this is. Um, I I got to a point where I was getting fucking smashed, and I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go back to the start. And when I went back there, I was just smashing everything. I'm like, oh, I see what my progression is now. Like I can feel the progression where I wasn't before. And I just run around the early part of the map and did as much as I can. And so I'll go try that boss now. And I was able to do it. And I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, and, and the the world itself is it's um it's so meticulously crafted. Like I, I I'm not gonna finish the game. I'm pretty much done with it. I got my fill of it. But I get it and I appreciate it. The amount of work in this game, there's something everywhere. Like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you go, there's always something. Or something happens that leads you somewhere. And you're like, oh, I'm in a completely different world now. Like, there's this whole world underneath the land that you're walking on, and and you just get lost down these caverns and shit, and uh, everything wants to kill you. And it's it's an insane, insane game. And like, I watched a playthrough of Maximilian Dude. He he played 140 hours of it, basically. By the time he's finished of it, he did fucking everything he could. And I and I've told you before, like I've been having it on during work or. Um, you know, just in the background or something where at night when I'm chilling out, I'll just watch somebody's playthrough. And it's a good game to watch someone play when you know they're good at it and you're not. <laughs> but, man, I, I highly rec- I recommend that game to people that are like me that poo-pooed this kind of shit for years. I say that because i got a free code. I'd never pay for it. But anyway, <laughs> besides that, Cyberpunk fucking owned my life. I love Cyberpunk, man. It's amazing. It's not like... It still has problems, but man, I I miss it. Like I, I I finished it, and ever since then I've been like, I wish I didn't finish it. Like I wish I just. I thought I got to a point where I finished all the side stories, and I did as much of the like gigs and stuff like that, like side missions and shit, and I thought I did them all, but then every now and then just more side stories just appear. I'm like, oh, there's more. There's, I've still got more of this game to go and I've already put like 80 hours into it. And uh, I finished the game and it takes you back to like the point of no return um, parts of the game that you know, some games do. They're like, do you want to save now or do you want to keep playing the world before you do this? Um, but so it put me back on that point when you finish the game and um, that's not a spoiler or anything like that. But... A lot of games do it. And and then when I got back to the game in that point, I'm like, all right, I know what happens now. And I wish I didn't do it because I wish I could have just extended the life of this because I I miss it. I was so enraptured with that game. Like, I I just, I hope there's more DLC coming. I hope there's like um, an expansion or something. Like, I'm probably optimistic. My optimism is probably misplaced, judging by the troubles that game has had. But oh man, it's it's on my, my all time favorite games list. It's so good. Uh, I don't know if you guys have played it or finished it, but fuck, I hope you enjoyed. If you ever do get to it, um, 
there are just a few really random ones. Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I, I clocked that the other uh, last week. That was a fun ride. Holy shit. Like, I, I've been, like, putting that game off for ages, and it's been in my back catalogue for months because I got it cheap, and I finally played it. I got, like, four bucks, man, like, last year at some point. <laughs> I finally played it. It's, I don't think it's as good as the uh, the other two, but it was a lot of fun. I really got that. I tried quick, Cricket 22. Dan, I, I played that because I was like, you've got FIFA and you've got 2K, whatever. And I'm like, I don't really have, there's no, there's not a strongman game and I don't know how they would do that <laughs> if they did. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what else is here and I don't really care much for sports at all. So I'll give Cricket 22 a go. And I, I, I installed it, uh, uninstalled it pretty quick when the game was just playing itself. Like I, I kind of, you know, I was, it puts you as like a fielder for a while and the ball yep. never comes your way. So you can't do shit. And then you're a batter and you're like, Oh cool. And you got to like figure out what you need to do in a short amount of time. And then before you know it, you're back on the field again. You're like, all right, this game is playing itself. I literally like push B or a mixture of buttons to hit a ball a couple of times. I got a few sixes. And then, uh, like, you make your own character and shit was cool. And um, there's a career mode. I, I might go back to it because I was kind of like, this is kind of charming. I can just chill with this. But it's pretty janky. But I don't know. <laughs> I tried, man. I, I wanted a sports game. I'll try it again. I started <laughs> Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, finally. that was I was really enjoying that. Yeah. Really good. I'm just... It's, I'm just not in the space for it. Uh, so I just like, no, nah, I'm out. And, and then I started um, Assassin's Creed Rogue a few nights ago instead of Valhalla because I'm an idiot. But I'm enjoying it. It's like g- give me that taste of Assassin's Creed Black Flag again. Um, so I'm going to be playing that for a while. That's my game going forward for some time. So I've played other shit, but I think I've like rambled off enough games. I've been gaming a lot, yes. And I, I will... Either catch up to you, Jamie, or I, I just might surpass you at some point this year. Oh, I fully, I fully expect the surpassing will be the thing because, um, yeah, I've, I've not got through anything for nearly a year. I'd say I can't remember the last game I actually beat, like fully beat. I don't remember. It might even well be Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah, that's how far back we'll be going to actually me beating a complete game. Um. I have been playing some stuff. Obviously, the last time we spoke, we were saying about the whole Horizon thing. Horizon was just about to come out. Um, Dan, that was the last time you and I uh, did a podcast together. We said, oh, yeah, we'll, re- we'll have some impressions next week, and next week never came. Um, <clears throat> so I know you spoke about it last week, Dan. I am. I th- I've done of the... If you consider the four main things you're going after, I've done the first two. Um, so not even halfway through it's stunning visually it was buggy as all hell when it came out uh, and i don't give it a pass and everybody who did give it a pass is having a giraffe some of the bugs in that game took you out of the world experience um it got patched pretty quick and apparently it has had several more sins so i'm imagining i won't have too much of a torrid time when i eventually do get back to it um, I tried a couple of weeks ago. I just put it on. I just finished the camp that I was at, the bandit camp I was in, and I was like, this is enough of this for now. I don't I don't want to. And that's kind of been the, the tail of the tape for me for the last God knows how long. Like, I, I start things up and get to that stage where it's like, I can see the appeal here, but I'm not overly about it. Elden Ring chunt, like, I, I love it, but I just do not have the hours to pump into it. Um the world as you alluded to is magnificent i don't think i've seen a world crafted that well um and the exploration portion of the way it lets you do it in whatever way you want gives you that breath of the wild kind of sense it's like yeah go off and see what this world's got to offer you you're going to get your dick kicked if you go in that direction but you can go in that direction if you want to i i really enjoyed that um i do want to go back to it when i eventually can um, what else came out around that kind of time and it was kind of like the, the season for it um, oh I bought Tiny Tina's Wonderlands oh, I'm nice. maybe th- it's kind of in worlds it's very linear um, which is odd because Borderlands is kind of linear but it is also an open world and um, this follows much more like a Dungeons and Dragons tabletop kind of vibe the storytelling is excellent Ashley Birch is unpopular opinion is better as tiny tina than she is as aloy and i had this realization when i was playing and i was like aloy in forbidden west 
is really annoying me. Like, I, I, she's getting on my nerves. I want to know more about the support cast. Like, I'm more gearing for when they're going to come back. I'm hoping that'll change because I really enjoyed Aloy in um, Zero Dawn. But at the minute, she's just annoying me. It's like, just accept the help that people are offering you. <laughs> Stop whinging <laughs> about people trying to help you, for fuck's sake. Um, but yeah, in Wonderland, she's she's awesome as Tiny Tina. Um, and the way that they structure the story around kind of a tabletop game of similar to Dungeons and Dragons, but it's it's very funny. The humor works better than it does in Borderlands. Um, the fantasy setting and stuff is is very, very, very good. The weapon mechanics and stuff haven't changed from Borderlands. The fact that you've got spells and things now is quite genius. It plays quite well into it. I was like, so it's almost like playing Destiny. I've got a spell equipped to each kind of bumper, and then I've got cool guns. I was like, oh, it'll be maybe a bit of a Destiny fix. It's not. It's not quite that level of polish the shooting doesn't feel that good um but i will carry on through that that is something that i have just been you know if i've got half an hour here or there it's like oh i'll go do the next level of that and then put it down and do it kind of piecemeal um destiny i can't remember if i spoke to you guys about finishing witch queen i obviously played through that expansion in about two days in fact i don't think i would have done because it came out in february um witch queen was and is uh and i don't say this lightly given my history with the franchise it's the best expansion destiny's ever had in terms of storytelling it everybody harpens on the taken king as do i i still think the taken king is the most fun i've had with the destiny expansion but chun as i've said before that's largely because we played through it together um and we had that experience in that kind of the first time destiny went cinematic and it was like wow and we were doing it together and the cutscenes were awesome and all that kind of cool stuff um which queen is it's just on another level. The way they've constructed the story, the way that they've been leaving little breadcrumbs over the last year that have led to this point, and where it goes from here, God knows. Um, I didn't get raid ready. I still aren't raid ready. I haven't been back to it. I would like to do it at some point because it's in a pyramid ship against a dark enemy, so it's like a brand new enemy type, and it's like I've got to kind of get there. But again, it's having the time to... I don't have the hours to become raid ready. It's like, I'll finish the story and put it down. Like, I'll I'll see you next season kind of thing. Yep. Um, I've not even been logging on to do the weekly stories, if I'm perfectly honest. Been playing a bit more FIFA, as I always do. I actually played a few. That's the longest I've turned a console on was last night. I played like two and a half hours of FIFA. Just as oh, I was nice. watching the football in the background. I was like, I'm going <laughs> to just sit and play. Had the football on the, on the computer screen. I was playing on the on the monitor so that's um i think that's about oh, arkham origins i've gone back to arkham origins that's the thing i'm playing on playstation at the minute so i managed to get a very cheap ps now code because obviously they're going to be going up astronomically when it all becomes playstation plus which we'll talk about in a bit um I, yeah i managed to get it because i was like, i want to play through arkham origins after watching the batman Oh, yeah. I don't even know if we've spoke about the Batman too much. I know we have, but we've messaged, we all know we've all seen it. But um, the more I've sat on that film, like from watching it, the more I enjoyed it. Do you know what I mean? It's like I, I said to Sinead, we were driving somewhere the other day. I was like, do you know what's really weird? Every now and then I keep thinking about that film. I keep thinking about elements of it. And it's like, I'm still not convinced by R. Pats as Bruce <laughs> yeah. Wayne, but I'm convinced by him as Batman. And that, is a weird distinction because Ben Affleck was great as both. Christian Bale was great as both. But um, anyway, we get, that's, that's a completely different tangent. Arkham Origins, just to talk about PlayStation now, it works better on like desktop than it does on a PlayStation. And I can't figure that out. The latency is perceivable. And, you know, I'm not playing a shooter. I'm playing the Arkham game. But I said to you guys, um, the fight in Arkham Origins... The first boss fight is with Deathstroke, and it's a quick time event. So you've got a, such a short window by the time you get to the end of that fight for the counters, and it's like I'm hitting the right button, and I know that my timing's not off. So it's the the latency between me hitting that button and it registering was throwing the fight off, and it took me about thirty five forty minutes to beat this boss that I've beaten three times on three different platforms in the last <laughs> ten years, and it was just not having any. I did get there in the end, but um. I think that game's aged brilliantly. It yeah. looks better than Arkham Knight, and I'm playing it streamed. I I I can't. What? I can't get over Arkham Knight. If you load Arkham Knight up now, it looks dog shit. It is blurry. It is just a mess. Oh, like, it looks it, looks the worst on Xbox because it's still only 900p. 
even on like but that's what i mean it's that's exactly so it's wild i could load arkham knight up on xbox on the series x get 900p and shitty bit rates and then go this looks dog shit or i can load arkham origins up which is streaming like from the cloud at 1080p yeah. on an oled tv and it look way better and it's like it's just it's baffling but yeah i'm enjoying going back through that i'm determined i am going to finish it this time because i've started that game as i said twice on xbox twice on steam once on steam twice and so once on xbox twice on steam and now on the they're playing the playstation 3 version now so I've been around the houses i will eventually finish it nice but there is nothing else i have played over the course of the last three months um highlight in there Witch Queen, as I said, that, that is what I finished. I finished that campaign in two days. Nothing else has been completed. So <laughs> we'll move on from what we've been playing and just talk a bit about a few kind of clinical things that have happened in the video game industry between uh, January and now. Uh, I, I alluded to it then, so we, we can touch here, and Dan, it'll let you take the stage for a moment. What's your uh, What's your feelings on the new PlayStation Plus offering? Yeah, well, I spoke about that a little bit last week as well. So mainly be you guys just talking about this one. But as a personal thing, um, it didn't affect me all that much. Like the 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 I don't want to say necessarily uproar, but like the reaction was just surprise. Well, it was just surprising to me. Just. Because basically what they announced, Sony announced the different tier levels and everything, everything which we already knew, like from two different sources, from Grub and from Schreier, they both said, this is what the thing's going to be, that's what it is. And then it came out and it was exactly what we were told. So I was like, ah, okay, well, it's just what we already knew. And they haven't taken anything away from me because I'll just essentially stick well i'll stick to that bottom level unless you know until we know what the games are we can't i can't really judge what they're giving us because we don't know what they're giving us really so i just looked at it like well my my subscription was coming up in may anyway and i'm gonna pay exactly the same as what i was so they're not make they're not charging me anymore and i'm getting exactly what i've been getting for the last 10 plus years so i didn't really have a reaction to it which was very you know it's not a very exciting thing to talk about, um, but that that's where I left it really. Yeah. I mean, I've um, you know, as a I subscribe to Game Pass, which includes everything um, that you'd need on the Xbox. I have actually come close over the last couple of months to cancelling it because I've not been playing anything, and it's like you're basically just taking eleven pound a month from me for me doing nothing i don't even think i'd turn the xbox on for one of those months um the playstation side of things it's like i'm never going to pay for it i mean i'll get a a month in the transition for the the code that i bought for playstation now will just turn into playstation plus is it the start of june that it comes into effect yes yeah, so i'll right. get i'll get a month of that but even when i was thinking about kind of what i'd use playstation plus for you know should we ever get to the stage of playing through the ghost of tsushima dlc or the returnal co-op thing you know those things that are there on playstation that i would need that subscription for then i just buy it there and then um i'm happy to let my subscription there lapse full stop so it didn't really do anything for me the playstation now side of thing i was curious when i got the i, I paid for it to do arkham origins and i was like what's what's actually in this library and i was scrolling through i was like right what's actually here and what is streamed and therefore jank uh, and what can I actually download to my console and play? And what people don't necessarily talk about too much is that a lot of it is the same. A lot of what is on Game Pass is on PlayStation now. Like that's something that doesn't come up. It's that they're arguably very, very, very similar services. The differentiator being you can download your 360 games or your original Xbox games and play them natively on your console, whereas you have to rely on streaming for the for the older stuff on the PlayStation. So again, yeah, for me, it doesn't resonate with me either way. Um, like I said, I, I will let my subscription lapse until it's something that is absolutely necessary or, for example, we're, we're trying to play through something that requires me having the, the subscription. But I think, as you're right, Dan, the reaction was largely silly. We knew what it was going to be. It wasn't so much as we're offering a new service. It's we're combining our services and the price structure's changing. That's literally 
all it all it is. Um, a lot of people kind of getting around the price changes has been quite funny to watch. So if you buy a year's PlayStation Now or PlayStation Plus Now, uh, compared to the price it will be when the the newer thing comes in, you basically can get it for half the price if you pony up up front, which is quite genius. But you're seeing then resellers of digital codes are like sky in the prices. I noticed that when I was just looking for it, I was like, I'll just get a month. And it's like people are putting up the price of three months to now be the same as like what a year would be and stuff. You know, scalpers are everywhere. Yeah, well, um, some people are buying like your five, three or five years worth of PlayStation now just to get it cheaper. I'm like, yeah, but what if you don't want it anymore? You've just paid for five mm. years. Like, that's yeah. just, I don't, don't understand. Like, just pay for a year. I, and get, if you... I get doing a year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If it's like, if, if the PlayStation was my only platform and I'd go... Yeah, I know that I'm going to need some multiplayer over the course of the next year. I'll I'll pay for it now in the long run. It'll save me half the price. Then fine. But yeah, these people buying years and years of it seems seems reductive. Um, Chun, I, I know you're obviously an act an avid Game Pass subscriber like myself. What's um what's your take? Well, <clears throat> I've I've only subscribed to <clears throat> excuse me PS Now like a handful of times over my PS three or ps plus whatever you want to call it ps3 and ps4 time and uh, i didn't really use a lot because obviously xbox is my main console right um but Mm. i find myself wanting a ps5 uh a lot at the moment because i there's some games i just don't think are going to get ported to xbox one being final fantasy 7 right and that's one of those games that i wish i had redeemed a ps plus subscription at the point (laughs) <laughs> when it was free yeah. you know um where i'm still in the world of like if i ever get a ps5 it'll be my secondary console so i'll just wait for sales which is what exactly what i did when i got my ps4 i just bought a bunch of games on sale like dirt cheap five or ten bucks here or there i don't think i, was, I spent more than 15 or 20 bucks on a game and then and they're still sitting in my psn library which is i think is how i'm just going to treat it going forward and that's how I handle most of my games now anyway, like even on Xbox. The, the only games I pay full price for is Nintendo because they don't want to reduce their prices on their first party stuff. Otherwise, I'd do the same there. Um, so I don't, I mean, I don't, I live in a world where I'm slowly trying to reduce any kind of subscriptions as, as possible. Like I keep forgetting my Amazon Prime subscription keeps coming out, but you know, it's only like six bucks or something like that a month. And, um, just forget about it but it comes in handy when you've got the free shipping and the um you know whatever else that you get with it and like audiobooks you get like free credits and shit so like it's like i'll keep it around right because <clears throat> it's like how to learn Mexico. how does it like i'm interrupting you here but i have a genuine life question how does that work because i've been getting more and more into my audiobook side of things and yep. i know that it's some kind of inclusion with prime but yep. what yeah. do i actually get you just accrue credits like over yeah. time and then right. eventually you're like you're, so if i oh, if i download the audible app or something or the, is it the kindle audible, app yeah. or the audible app i can redeem yeah. it for an audiobook because yeah. i've and been a prime i've been a prime member for like three years and it will yeah. say this book costs so this eat. much or or it's one credit book. or one credit or whatever it is and you just yeah. might have some that are built up and then you can just use a credit and just get a book yeah and they'll be like hey you've got this amount of credits that are about to expire you know how about these books and, like, I, I bought, like, a, a shit ton of, like, you know, how to learn Spanish, <laughs> you know, kind of audio books <laughs> that I, I've, I've been trying to, like, I'm, you know, I've, I've been trying to, it's hard, man. Spanish is hard, but anyway. But, yeah, so, like, I, I keep yeah, that. it's not an easy, not an easy life. But, yeah, sorry to, uh, sorry to uh, interrupt you, but no, no. I, I have been listening, listening to it. Well, I actually was doing Blinkist, you know, the, the kind of short form Cliff Note audio books thing. I did a subscription to that, and I was, like, this is cool, but I'm not willing to pay this. But there was some books that I listened to the Cliff Notes of, and I was like, I could actually go for listening to the whole thing of this. Exactly so right. I'll, I'll do that. I, I enjoy the audiobooks, and that's the audiobook credits are the main reason I keep my Prime subscription. You know, no other reason. And um, like even Disney Plus, I never fucking use it. Like unless like Sarah wants to watch something on Disney Plus, and like you know, she, I've got she's got a profile on my account, so we just share that. And like I'm on her. Um, on her netflix um and you know i I just uh, i I, i'm one of those i want physical media for my movies and shit but games i don't really care so it's like i'm a hypocrite (laughs) but 
I don't think I'll pay for PS Plus or PS Now at any point. I'm just going to keep buying my games on sale, man. Like, I'm just so over all these streaming services. Like, there was a report that went out. They did an American survey of, like, the amount of people that are currently paying for uh, streaming services that have, like, five or more in their household um, and those that aren't willing to let them go, even though they keep paying more and, like, adding more subscriptions. Like, people are just so hooked on just having that content there, like, any time, you know? And I don't want to fall into that. Like, I, I just... It's a trap. Like, we just went through that with cable. Like, everybody, is, this isn't a new story, right? Everybody's like, oh, cables. We just got out of cable and cutting the cord, but now we're paying for all this bullshit subscriptions. This is exactly what cable providers are offering for, like, packages of, like, you pay X amount and you get these channels or some shit. But now we're paying, like, more. Like, if every one of them is, like, 10 or 15 bucks each in Australia and you pay for, like, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Stan, Amazon, like, what else do we have here? Hulu? I don't know. Um... Just, you know, five or six different things and they're like a hundred bucks a month. Like, it's ridiculous. There's, you, no one needs that much content, <laughs> you know? Nah. And as well as massively on a mass, Massively on a tangent though, but what do you, like, if you, you know, off the top of your head, what do you actually actively pay for every month in terms of which subscription? Oh, oh I'll never get rid of my Game Pass because that's, at the moment, um, it gives me what I want. And there's games in there that I've found enjoyment out of um, that I never would have bought in the first place. Uh, and I know, like, there's a lot of similar content on PlayStation within their subscription service as well. But Game Pass has been a boon, man. Like, between Sarah and I, like, just the option of, like, let's just play this, you know, and we'll play this game together. Uh, you know, then we don't have, there's such a low barrier of entry for that, you know, and uh, you can yeah. share, like, my profiles on my, my brother's Xbox so his kids can play games that are on game pass as well in my digital library and shit you know um i hope they do introduce i think there are plans for a a, a family plan they're talking about releasing for game pass which i think is they should do um Mm -hmm. but i do think overall game pass is the better service and that's just not coming from an xbox nerd but um there's too many games man seriously seriously like if you pay for game pass nintendo uh, ps plus and nintendo online how the fuck are you going to play all that shit? <laughs> you know, like no, you're act- you're actively not, and that was that was my point in like the actual. You know, you said about there's too much content. It's across the board, and I was like, well, you're talking about what you know what what we actually pay for a month. I recently did try and trim trim a lot down, so I kept Game Pass because it is nice. You know, something comes out, and it's like, oh, it's straight on Game Pass, and I want to check it out. I have the option to check it out. I can even if it's something which I've been doing actually when I'm on the fence about it. So like Tunic, for example, it's not a Twitch shooter or something like that. It's like you have that option built in now where it's the stream rather than download. Yep. And it's like, I'll fire this up for five minutes, see if it catches me. And if it does, I'll, I'll hit download. And then I can just carry on when it's finished installing on the console. Um, I didn't with Tunic. I played it for about three minutes. I was like, oh, everything's too hidden. This is too bullshit. Fuck this. Turned it off literally four and a half minutes. So I saved myself time in downloading, waiting for the install, and then firing it up just by hitting that stream button. It was quite useful. Um, so I kept Game Pass. Like Netflix, I think I don't think we can get rid of Netflix. We use it so much just for background noise. Yeah. You know, like old TV shows we used to watch. Like you know, Sinead will go to bed and just have old episodes of Friends on. Like in the bed, it's something that we genuinely use every day. But I weirdly think the one that I couldn't live without in the house is YouTube. Oh fuck yeah! YouTube Premium. Yep. YouTube Premium. It's expensive. It's more expensive than Netflix. But, man, have you tried to have ads on YouTube since having that service? Yeah. It's got wild out there. It's got crazy. The amount of adverts that are on every single video is absolutely bonkers. But, yeah, I think other than those, I mean, we obviously we've got our Prime subscription, but the whole household gets free deliveries and access to the, the TV side of it. So we've got yeah Prime, Netflix, Game Pass, and then the other one is um, the our Apple subscription, which the Apple subscription does everything in one. It's music, fitness, news, um, whatever else is included in it. Oh, so Two terabytes like- of cloud storage. So it's it's all like five things. So that's only like a handful. Yeah. So like we got rid of Disney Plus and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, do we use it? It's like realistically, something comes out. It's like so Moon Knight, right? I'll wait for the whole season to be out. 
and then Kenobi will be coming out. So it's like I'll just pay for one month, consume all that content, and cancel it. It's not something that I need to constantly have access to. But Netflix and um, Netflix and my Apple subscription, like we we use the workouts every day. I use Apple Music every day. The cloud storage we use every day. Our whole photo libraries and stuff are there. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like it's something you use all the time. Don't mind paying for that stuff. It is this stuff like you said that niggles up. So like a Disney Plus or a Hulu or having Game Pass and PS Now and Nintendo and all of it. Like, you, there's no way one human or one household can can utilize all that content and so, dan i got a feeling you're you're about ready to tell us what you've made a list <laughs> i, <laughs> I, I have i, re- I written it down mm-hmm. <laughs> so we pay for prime um which it probably has the least amount of stuff on it of all the things but um it's just so goddamn it's the deliveries cheap. though it's, it, yeah and it's 50 it's like it's 59 dollars for an entire year and anytime I feel like, well, I'm not getting much out of Amazon Prime. And then, like, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel came out the other month. And I'm like, this is my favorite show. So um, so we pay for Prime. We pay for Netflix, the 4K version, uh, for just two of us. Mm-hmm. Um, Stan, we we scunge off the family. Uh, Disney, we're, we pay half. KO, which over here, for people that aren't in Australia, is basically the, all the sports channels. Um, which I pay as, yeah, anyway, I pay half of that. We'll just say half of that. Then there's binge, which is all the HBO stuff. So we pay, we pay for that. Uh, and then there's, I play f- for PlayStation plus for the year and we started using Apple, but there's no way we're going to keep Apple because there's nothing on it. It's just boring as dog shit. Um, but yeah, so so we go through it and the the weird thing is like things like Stan would be the first thing we get rid of but we're not actually paying for that at the moment so um, I get we between Monique and I we get use cause out of all of it at the same time because and this is different to probably most couples like Chant like you and T- Sarah will watch the same thing together um, Monique and I when we're watching shows are always in different moods so she'll be watching on bin she'll watch like um the the sex in the city um thing that came out recently like them current day like the older versions of them and while she's watching that so woke (laughs) she's watching that on binge and then i'm watching the witcher on netflix and then she'll watch something on uh prime like a like a movie or something while i'm on disney plus watching moon Knight. Or, so we're all, we're we're using them all in in the sense that we're not actually watching a lot together because later on she'll end up watching the witcher while i'm what put watching another thing or catching up on another show that she's already watched so we're always not at the same time um, so we get used you out of it. But... Your show watching in sync, bro. <laughs> no, but then the PlayStation, like the PlayStation, is what gets that out of sync, because it's just like okay, for Horizon Forbidden West is on. Um, so, sorry, Monique. Um, this weekend games come out. We're not spending any time together. So then I just play that. I play that entire game all weekend. So she's going to be using all the other services, and that's just how it works. Oh, um, that's a good. It's a good way of explaining parenthood to you. So, you know, you have that feeling where it's like, oh, a game's come out. I'm not spending any time with you. You can't say that to a two-year-old. <laughs> I can say it just wouldn't be my two-year-old. Like, <laughs> two-year-old just goes, uh, fucking playtime. Yeah, I've and got you news go, for you, Dad. I'm busy doing my own playtime. And it's like, playtime. <laughs> and you get dragged around everywhere by the hand. To be fair, well, my my food. brother-in-law so um, came around with his two-year-old, and I kept playing, and he's just like amazed by all the colours and that. So I just gave him the other PlayStation Five control, and <laughs> he just played with it while I played. He thought no, he was I... contributing. I was like, "That's that," and we got about ten minutes out of that, so that was good. <laughs> my two-year-old's too crazy to give a video game controller to. It'll be through the TV screen. Oh dear. <laughs> He's a, he's, he's, a, he's a hyper little boy. and But yeah, so PlayStation Plus subscriptions doing the things. We've talked about that. Awesome. Um, in terms of other things that I had down kind of of note, um, 
it was around what Nintendo were doing with their subscriptions, but I don't think we need to harp on about that too much going into the rest of it. It's not really changed too much. Uh, but something Nintendo that we do have to talk about is the fact that Breath of the Wild 2, or the Breath of the Wild sequel, as they keep calling it, uh, has been pushed to next year. Mm. And I'm pretty sure we called that. I'm pretty sure we were like, there's no way that game's coming out in 2022. Well, last like, time we nah, heard about absolutely. it, they said, we're aiming for th- we're aiming for 2022, meaning... They weren't even I sure even that. that. I think it was holiday 2022, wasn't it? it was like, yeah. It's like holiday 2022, we hope. Yeah. Um, so. And yeah, they've it, it won't. It'll come out in that April window next year, I'd imagine. Gives them the extra six months or so time to cook it. Um, it does beg the question, they're like, what the fuck are they playing at? <laughs> yeah. How long? That would have been six years to develop a sequel built in the same engine using largely the same assets. Six years. I know they've got a bar of quality to hit, but crikey. And there's been two years of pandemic through that as well, obviously, as well. Um, but that's that's just bonkers to me. Um, disappointing, but by the same token, like I said, I'm not really in the game space, so I can wait another year for a, for a Zelda game. Um, weirdly, as we talked about, the things that I do want to play this year are all Nintendo games. Yep. All the ones that remain, at least, you know. Um, is Wii Sports is out? Uh, sorry, Wii Sports Switch Sports. The it's Wii Sport that's out. out this weekend, right? Uh, um, and then we've place, got yeah. obviously Splatoon is in the summer, right? And then there was some other stuff. Carl, I, I, I still haven't picked up Kirby yet. You know? Did you you bought it though? Yeah. No, I, I you just haven't played it. I haven't gone to pick up my copy yet. And like, um, uh, Mario Strikers is coming out soon in June as well, and that's the other one. Yeah, Mario Strikers was the other one, and Xeno Xenoblade Three. I did actually the longest window of time I've put into a game as I was traveling. I was like a four and a half hour flight, um, last month, month before. I can't remember. Um, it's it's since we lasted. I played Xenoblade Chronicles Two, the DLC expansion for that that I bought and never played. I played through that for that whole flight there and the whole flight home. Wow. So I put like nine hours in and I was like, this game's great. And oh my God, it's like the, not the satisfied grip. I've got a different grip for my Switch. I've got the, um, because it's the OLED model, I've got the, who made Skull & Co. Made a different grip and it fe- it's, it's wicked. And I was just like, I said, this is great. And this screen is beautiful. And this game, like I was like, I was in my element. Um, got back and I was like, I need to finish that expansion. The switch has been sat in the dock ever since. Like I have not, I put it in there to charge when I got back, and I've not taken it out. So it's just one of those things where it's like almost like having to be in these scenarios where I can play a game mm. to allow myself to do it. So it's like I've got a. To be fair, I've only got an hour flight on Monday, but I'm going to make sure I don't throw that in my backpack just to do that and make sure that I can keep How on through. How did you get nine it's, hours it's, out of your switch? Hey, how did you get nine hours out of your uh, switch? It was a four and a half each way, four and a half hours each, four and a half hours each way. Okay. So obviously I was, you know, I had, I could charge when I landed. Um, but yeah, it, it was struggling. Like the battery had like 3% left when I, when I arrived, but that's still pretty good for a JRPG, like to get yeah. four and a half hours out of it at max brightness with Bluetooth audio. So it did, didn't do a too bad a job. Um, and that's uh, yeah. The, um, the Breath of the Wild thing was the one of the f- the few remaining points that I had to pick up on. Do you guys have uh, anything else of note that's kind of happened, Dan? I know you were talking about some bits last week, but Chunt, is there anything that we've uh, not covered off? Nothing major in the game space, eh? Like it's been pretty. I mean, E three is not happening anymore. Yeah. You know. So yeah, it's... that's a, that's kind of a. Are we are we bothered? I think I kind of well, would I rather we can have the same the problem platform we... holders do their own thing. We bitch about every year now. It's like, well, we're, we're going to have like a month worth of news instead of just having a big event in a few days. You know, and we're just going to have this constant like trickle of bullshit and these rumors and these like everybody trying to make content out of nothing that just fills up everything. You know, I just yeah, I wish- which, which I will we, I will point out we're not we're not going to do. Do you know what I mean? That whole content out of every single little piece. I mean, yeah, I feel like we as the three of us, and I know I'm speaking for all three of us, but we benefited from that massively through the pandemic because it gave us something to do every week. It gave us something to talk about. It gave us talking points. But with the world reopened and everybody's lives continuing, 
you can't keep consuming news and updates at that pace. Like, I don't know how people's brains can phys physically do it when they're trying to actually live in the real world and not in the pandemic locked in your whole own house and therefore trying to find news to consume kind of yeah. space. I think yeah. the I think the other thing that publishers will learn is that what what they were doing they can't get away with anymore. Like you can't turn every announcement into the biggest thing because people just are getting furious and are my thought is they're still going to have their announcements but it's going to be like we need to time it so everything we're showing is something big and not just a bunch of like random stupid announcements um you know like this even the sony state of plays um while they're not always enticing at least they're spreading them out enough for me to be like okay it's about that time of year where they're going to do something I know that the big showcase thing is not going to come until the end of the year because they've done that in the last two years. So yeah. I, you don't really need to pay attention until that point if you're just looking for the big stuff. Um, so it's starting to get to a point where I kind of know what to expect from a lot of the publishers. Um, but yeah, you can't just trickle out. We're going to have a 30-minute stream on Tuesday from Capcom and they're just going to talk about that there's a character popping up in another game or yeah, little <laughs> random shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to, it's got to go away. I think people have, have realized that they can't do that. So I guess kind of with the, the remainder of the year in sight, you know, we're what a quarter way through now, just over a quarter way through. Uh, we spoke about like Nintendo and kind of the things chunk that we're looking at weirdly are largely the same four games. I think um, coming to the switch that we we're waiting for. Is there anything else kind of queued up, Dan, PlayStation side that you're you're looking forward to? I know that it was very front loaded with like Seafood and Horizon and that kind of stuff. Do we know about anything else coming the remainder of this year? Because I straight up don't think there's anything coming to PlayStation that I want to buy no. this year. That not, kind of. not know of. I think the middle of the year, like kind of the you know, say like March to September, I reckon is extremely barren. Um, I think it's everyone's hindering all of their hopes on God of War making it this year. I think it will, but I think they're going, they're going to be pushing it to get it to like September, or October time. Um, and then I'm looking forward. Well, I'm cautious, cautiously optimistic about like Gotham Knights and, and was spoken like, like those games. And I think there's another game in October that's coming that's possibly coming out as well but literally through may june july august i can't think of a, a single game that i'm actually looking forward to playing um not even mm. something that's mildly interesting like this like what saints row um i was never going to play i think that's going to come out like there's games like that that are just going to skate right on by yeah i think there's a, there's a lot of that across across the board the whole when was Gotham Knights dated for? It is October, isn't it? Yeah, end of October, I think. Yeah, so that that and for for spoken genuinely is like the triple A thing that, other than Horizon, that I was very excited for this year. Um, I still aren't convinced it's going to hit. I don't know if they make this year. To be perfectly honest, it seems like one of those things that are going to be perpetually delayed. Um, it is also Square, so they're kind of <laughs> you know they do that a lot. Um. I'm By still way, predicting. I'm still predicting. Uh, so um, I was just going to say, I'm still predicting Hellblade will, two will come out this year. Do you, you think well, that's this year? I yeah. hope so because there's nothing else. <laughs> like yeah. Xbox is really well. There's the there's the there's the thingy that um the four player co op thing that whatever their ma names making. I can't remember what the studio is now that's working on it. Ninja Theory Avalanche, is it? No. Ah, oh, red. Ah, oh, no, the no. red. Yeah, I know. It's the I, I can't remember, remember the name of it. It was that unimpressive. Um, yeah, I did not like it. <laughs> no, but Hellblade, I mean, it unless like uh, it... unless Hellblade Two is being turned into some open world type game, then which they've confirmed it isn't. It's just an expansion no. on the same kind of thing as the first. Yeah. It's supposed to be three times the size of the first, but the first see. game was relatively short. It can be well, beaten yeah. about six or seven hours, can't it? Yeah. It was still con yeah. it was still contained, and I just think that that will still come this year. 
Um, but I think they want to also drop yeah. that announcement with other announcements. Yeah, I think if I can't remember what the name of that game is, but they were convinced that that was this year's this is it Redfall game. Redfall. Redfall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's gonna. It, it would hit the. It would have the Halo slot for this year, and then yeah, you maybe think that Hellblade has the Forza slot for this year, and they're your two temple titles for this year and then next year you'd have to be hoping like man we need to see something about fable yeah. <laughs> i know that apparently playground are having some issues and in the fact that they don't know how to build an open world uh they know how to build an open world racing game but as soon as you start putting quests and missions into it they're getting a bit stuck so they're rapidly hiring um which indicates to me that it's a good few years away still yet and i think phil spencer said as much like they're not going to rush these teams well, um, but you guys haven't mentioned Starfield. No, no excitement for Starfield? Um, I mean, it's great that it's coming to Game Pass, but I can't say that I'm excited for it because I've been Bethesda burnt. Yeah. I want to see what I'm it is. You know? Yeah, we don't know what it is. It's, just, it's a space version of Skyrim. Great. Yeah. I've played it. I've played a space version of Skyrim. I've played several. It's like, what? what's it going to do to actually get us? Which... You know, that may change. It may become the, you know, the most anticipated thing come... I'm just going to say E3, but I, you know I don't mean E3. There's that window of whenever yeah. it gets shown off at the Microsoft presser. I'd imagine that's the game that they dedicate a 20 or 30 minute segment to this year. You know, like they did with Horizon last year, where it's like they were actually showing you the tech and it working and some of Mexico. I think we get that deep dive on Starfield um, and Redfall if it is coming this year. So yeah, maybe maybe one of them does slip I'm more inclined. I, I agree with you, Dan. I think Hellblade would be the one to make it, and Redfall would be the one to slip. Um, and it'd be Hellblade and Starfield as the two kind of well, things for them to. to well, I'm only year. I'm only going by Hellblade because that's the only one we've seen any type of gameplay from at this point. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well, Phil Spencer did I say totally a while ago that 2022 will be the year that we start seeing the effects of the COVID gap you know, uh, where we've had games pushed out or games delayed <clears throat> and 2022 is the catch up, <laughs> catch up year. Like, um, uh, I think that's what we're seeing here. Like Xbox doesn't really have much on the horizon <clears throat> really. And not like you've said, neither does Sony. Um, Nintendo seems to be the only Even one the that third has party's money struggling, hey? Yeah, that's right. I mean, the fact that I'm more excited for, Kirby, Mario Strikers, a new Pokemon game, all on Nintendo and whatever the other fourth game was. I can't remember what it is now. Uh, we need to do all... a deep dive on Hogwarts as well. Oh, my God, yeah. Hogwarts. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd quite like to make that a downloading soon because yeah. I think we were originally going to even back before we kind of saw it, but it looks that was sick. very impressive. I know it's kind of a fart in the wind now, but it looked a lot more impressive than I think it had any right to be or even... I... Maybe uh, what, what we were expecting. I have reservations, but we'll save that. Oh, of course. There's definite reservations to be had around it. It's been in development hell for years. Um, but I like what they seem to be doing with it. If you've got that whole light and dark mechanic, um, you know, akin to a Mass Effect or a Halo, uh, sorry, a Fable or something like that, where it's like, you know, how dark can you get? Can you be a badass, dark magic wielding motherfucker if you want to be? Or, I, I mean... Looking at the game's rating and the way that it's presented, I can't see it navigating you through a, you must be a good wizard, Harry. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't see that happening. So it'll be interesting to see anyway. But um, again, whether it makes this year, I um, it's not it's not making this year, is it? It got delayed already. Yeah. Oh, really? but, oh, dear. Yeah, it got <laughs> delayed, I think. To 2023, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was coming this year, wasn't it? They were aiming for summer or something, and then it got, then it got bumped. Yeah, uh, probably not the worst thing in the world because everything surrounding the whole Harry Potter franchise at the minute just needs to. It's very noisy for the wrong reasons. Yes. Uh, the latest, the latest film has obviously got absolutely rinsed to pieces, and the uh, the shit that's going on with J.K. Rowling doesn't even need speaking about. And there's room. Keep her, keep her mouth shut. Yes. Stop offending all of the people that have bought her material. <laughs> yeah. And over the last God knows how oh, long. She's already got all the but money. Yeah, yeah, she's so now she can just, you know, be a bit of a, be a bit of a bomb hole. 
but yeah, I'm not going into any conversations about shit like that. Um, I will say no though, conversations like, about I've I've made an active effort to like stay out of the games kind of news cycle for a good, a good couple of months now, and I just find myself mm-hmm. chilling more, chilling with the game and being more present in the game and like playing games that aren't even new ones, and like. I don't yep. feel myself stressing about all that kind of shit. I'm just like, yeah, this is great. You know, and I've muted a lot That's, of shit on Twitter, <laughs> you know? It's the point I was making about us, um, you know, I, I appreciate we have taken a few months where we've not really been able to do this, but, like, not obviously the speaking with you guys is super fun, yeah. and but I we enjoy it. We've done it for years, like, and had a conversation around the discourse about video games, but I'm much like yourself, like, just stayed away from it and got out of the discourse and the cesspit that is a lot of coverage because it's just all negative and it's like it's it's draining it's like you know one week you've got what's going on at activision and the scumbaggery that's happening there and then all of a sudden there's you know another studio like one of the xbox studios was getting called out for for having it and it's like we know that naughty dog been forcing crap like it's like all you hear now is is bad and it's like but it's not it's supposed to be a way of relaxing yeah. and i think when we used to if you kind of go back and look at the conversations that we'd had years and years ago like it was we were always excited I was always excited to talk about video games and excited to talk about what we're excited for and be excited together and have those drops of those games that did hit and they did land and it was super fun but so much of the industry is now just a cesspit yeah. of I'm right. No, you're right. No, you're right. No, I'm wrong. What do you mean I'm wrong? You're wrong, not me. And it's like it's just just shut up. Just play the game. Like exhausting. Did you enjoy? Did you enjoy it? Did you have a f- good time with the entertainment that you consumed? Let's have a healthy conversation about it. If the answer is no, then talk about why you didn't. But I don't care about the kind of the inside the studio nonsense and the marketing hyperbole. And it's like just go away. Like I've not got the time for it. Yeah. Um, and I don't. I don't want to talk about it. I think that's why, you know, at the start of the year, given as busy as we were, it was healthy to say, let's do this every other week and just actually catch up about what we've been playing and have a more... Well, I take some of that stuff now just as informative stuff rather than opinion stuff. So, you know, like with the PlayStation Plus subscription, yeah, I saw that come out and I treated it as, tr- treated it as this is an informative thing, as in this is how you, this is how much you're going to pay to continue with the service and I go, okay. And then I move on. But <laughs> some people took it as a way. It's like, no, this needs to be an opinion based thing. Like this is my opinion on what it's like. I, I don't care what your opinion is. I just want the information and then I'll move on. Like I don't. This subscription change offends me. Yeah. Not, not everything has to be a discussion or an argument. It's sometimes you just get information and you just take it and move on. It's oh, not, yeah. It's like, um, so, and that's what I'm treating so much of this like when it's like okay, uh, uh, Sony, Sony buys Bungie. I'm like okay, they bought Bungie. Cool. All right, let's move on. <laughs> We're not going to see anything from this for ages. And if I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to talk about the fun stuff. I'm going to talk about what game are they making? That could be exciting. Not this is good or bad because of what it's going to do to the rest of the people in like i'm not going to even go near it no because i think there's got to be an element of taking taking the art away from the human element and the more that you do that and start consuming the content as art for what it is you know there's painters back in the day used to paint with fucking blood could you imagine the discourse around that? <laughs> So-and-so opens up his ho- own wrists to paint masterpiece. Like, no, like, that's just, it's, take it for what it is. I don't care about the person, I, care's a strong word, the person's mental health to have gotten to that point to do something like that is not the part that I am c- actively trying to consume. I'm trying to consume the media, the the entertainment, the thing that makes me switch off. I shouldn't have to think about everything. It should just be nice to turn something off and enjoy it. Like I said about the Batman movie earlier, I managed to avoid all conversation around it. I watched zero reviews. I saw that tens were coming in from everywhere and was like, all right, I wasn't expecting that. But I went in going, 
this is going to be an average experience or I'm going to have a better time than expected. I had a better time than expected. Chun, I know you were the opposite. You probably went in going, oh, this looks very comic booky. They might finally do like the dark take. And you didn't have the greatest of times with it. And it's like, Dan, you would, you know, very in the middle and like, oh, I could do with more of this, but it's got its problems. Um, so we all have different opinions, but I didn't partake in the discourse. And I think that that's, especially with us doing like this, this show and moving it forward. For me anyway, that is, that is how I'm looking at it now. And I can't commit to how frequent it'll be given, you know, the crazy busyness that I spoke about at the start. But it'd be nice that when we do get together to do this, we can just have a chat about what we've been playing and what we enjoyed about those things and new experiences we maybe didn't think we'd like. Or, you know, if we manage to play a game together, like, the, well, I mean, I'm the, the denominator in there because I can play something with Dan on the PlayStation or with you on the Xbox. Do you know what I mean? And have those actual nice conversations around what we're enjoying in the in the space rather than just harboring on about the news because seriously like fuck the news just in general not just video game news just news in general you know you open twitter now and you see you see people jumping out of buildings in a in china and dogs being beaten over the head with sticks to death and it's like that's enough twitter for one day and yes. you open it up again and it's like oh there's some sex scandal inside a video game studio and you know it just it's everybody's got an opinion and it's it's not the stuff that i think people should be having opinions on if we want to have an opinion it should be on our enjoyment of the entertainment in which we are partaking yeah 100 percent agree like i mute all that shit because i don't want to see it so I've, I've been taking a stronger stance on like catering my own experience and what i want to see and like as far as gaming goes like sarah has been helping me play just just play games because she just likes to watch me play like i'll just throw it on twitch you know, and she can watch from where she is, and she yeah. just likes to chill out. And like, I'll be, I'm playing Assassin's Creed. She watched me play a lot of um, Cyberpunk and um, Assassin's Creed Rogue now, and just whatever. She's like, are you, uh, Elden Ring stuff. She's like, are you going to play something? I'm like, I don't know. We can just hang out, whatever. She's like, no, can you just play something? Because I like watching you play. I'm like, all right. So I just get the chance to sit there and actually enjoy this game, and I don't feel like I need to do something else. And so I've been. Mm -hmm taking the extra time of like i can just sit here and enjoy this game and i don't feel obligated to do anything and i don't have yeah. all the shit pinging on twitter or social media and yeah you know i can and like even dc comics like i know this isn't games but like i used to be so fucking passionate about dc comics shit um that i and there's a lot i don't agree with what's happening and the the creative decisions and stuff like that but i want to I, I want that enjoyment back and like uh, DC Universe Infinite, whatever it is, the subscription service they have finally launched here in Australia, and they're offering like a half fifty percent off, like for the first year or whatever. Um, uh, and you know, if, if you roll over, you keep that discount for as long as you keep paying every year. And I was like, you know what? I think I'll just I'll do that. I'll take that. Thank you. And um, I want to get I want to read more comics again because I and just take the like you said bullshit out of the art <laughs> you know i want to just enjoy what i used to enjoy again and i've been doing that mm -hmm. a lot with many things over recent months and it's been very relaxing <laughs> in comparison to what like i used to be uh like i used to get caught up in everything yeah. it's like fucking yeah fucking rage and shit now i'm just like chilling just enjoying my shit like i used to and yeah i need to i need to take a, a leaf out of that myself like with a lot of with a lot of stuff i mean with the way that i was basically using and abusing games and the industry especially over the the pandemic is like a you know buying everything that came out straight away like building this i mean i basically had a freaking production studio in my office for god's sake like but yeah. it's like what but 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 why like i had that realization of like why and i you know sat staring at a two and a half thousand pound computer going i i don't i don't use you like what it was great fun to build, but what am I what am I actually using you for? And you sit there and you go nothing. And I found myself more and more just doing that. I think I said to you guys like I had all of my consoles hooked up downstairs, like they were just connected to the TV. And it was like that realization of you know two kids in the house, and it's like my time to play video games is between the hours of like half nine and midnight when everyone else has gone to bed, and I get those couple of hours to myself. So I made huge changes to like downscale all that stuff and i've downscaled as said downscaled my consumption both of games and of the media surrounding it I've removed all of the subscriptions and stuff around it and it's just like just everything like that in general i need to just 
I need to go back to treating it as a hobby and yes. not something that uh, I'd, I, you know, th some of the investment that we've put in over the years, like it, it may as well have been a second job. Yeah. Um, and it, it wasn't for, for, don't get me wrong, like we, we didn't, we've not grown to anywhere near the place where we could call this a job. It is still very much a hobby. But um, the feeling became chore like. It's like I have to play a game because it's come out and I want to talk about it. And it's like, I'll just fucking get to it when I get to it. Like that's yeah. that's my my new my personal growth and where uh, <laughs> with video games are concerned is I'll get to it when I get to it and nobody's gonna convince me otherwise but it would be very nice both of you to actually sit and play and enjoy a video game together sometime soon Chandler, yeah. obviously you and I used to play Death Destiny heaps together but I don't live on that side of the world anymore and Dan we have got games stacking up on the PlayStation side that have added multiplayer stuff I'd be quite keen to check Returnal out actually that yeah um, co-op mode because i never finished it i don't know if you did uh i no i never i i, I couldn't clock it. i just had to stop i couldn't um do any more but i got to the final world i know i'm in the final world mm. in that game so um yeah. yeah but i'd love to play the the co-op stuff to figure out how different yeah. it is if you do stream it I so mean, i can watch it <laughs> yeah sure. we'll, we'll do we'll do some of that but again stuff that we do for us for the enjoyment of the actual experience yeah. um but yeah we'll definitely definitely have to do that kind of stuff and chun when godfall eventually does go to game pass i'll nuke through that with you yeah because it was great. it was very they always sold it yeah if they just said that it was just like a small hack and slash experience with some loot mechanics i think everybody had been pleasantly surprised but because it was tipped as like the first big looter for the PlayStation 5. And it's like, it was geared and marketed and pushed. It never was going to live up to those expectations. So obviously didn't. Um, but I think that's probably a good good place to wrap up. I think we've been going for over an hour and a half, haven't we? Oh, really? So. Oh, Aaron, Aaron, seven minutes. Oh, that's no, not too not bad. actually as long as that. It would have been an hour and a half had we actually would've. been able to get going without technical difficulties. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I've... Uh, I've very much got to go continue with my with my work day. But it's good to actually sort... I, as I said, I don't know when I can next find the time to do this. I know next week, obviously, we've got Easter. I'm away on a video shoot for a few days, and then um, I've got wall-to-walls -walls when I get back, so it won't be next week for me, hopefully. Uh, and again, if that is just my sign-off point of going, I might be around a bit less, there's no reason that you two can't still have conversations with each other whenever you want. 100%. But, I still want to maintain and keep doing this and talking about the stuff that we're excited about and be excited about it and not actually deal with any of the discourse or bullshit that's going on in the industry because I think that's how we differentiate, to be perfectly honest. Make it about three people who enjoy video games and their opinions on the things they're enjoying. And why are we playing Their them? opinions on the bullshit that's going on. Yeah. Yes. We, we play them to relax and lose ourselves and immerse ourselves in different worlds, not to um, sit here and have conversations about the skull fuckery that's going on in and around the industry and yeah, I, do, I do regularly get to these phases i think it's one of the reasons we uh you know we stopped way back with uh, the whole game plug thing was that it was getting too much about the negativity and you have to kind of step away from it but i know the three of us won't do that with this because it is more about spending the hour catching up together and actually talking to each other really as yes. much as it is a show we're hmm. not putting a show on if that makes sense it's like it's just the three of us talking about video games so let's keep doing it i've tried to sign off three times i am going now enjoy the rest of your day boys anybody who has come back to watch thank you appreciate we've been gone for a while but um your support is encouraged and appreciated love you bye it's it, guys.